In this video, we're going to take a look at file upload and retrieval in Spring Boot Java 21. So here you can see that we're retrieving an image. And also if you take a look at this link here, we can see if you go to it, we'll get the PDF download for us. So let's have a look at how we can set this up. The first thing we'll need to do is go to our Docker Compose file, and we just need to add the volumes app uploads here. So recall that the working directory for our Docker container is the slash app. And we want this to survive container shutdowns. So we'll have access to our images and files in this uploads file. So we just add that volume there. And then we can just reference the app data volume key here as a volume. So next we take a look at our file storage service. So we just create a service here and we go ahead and we just get our imports in here. And let's go ahead and set the root location. So what we're going to do is in the Docker Compose, when the Docker container from our working directory, we're going to have this uploads folder here and that matches the folder in this volume that's specified in the Docker Compose file. And that's going to be the root location where we save our files. So when we initialize this service, there's a, going to be a constructor. And it's, this sort of resembles a singleton sort of pattern where if the file, uh, the location hasn't been created yet, we just go ahead and create that. So that means we'll have access to that. So then we'll have some help methods here. So we can have a get file extension. So we're going to upload a file and what we can do is we can just get the last index dot because there might be another dot in the name of the file and we can just go ahead since it's zero base we can add a, a one to that and get the substring to get the file extension. We can also have this helper here to see if it's a valid image file. Now I've just got JPEG and JPEG with an E in it if our file name as the extension with that type in it will allow it. Of course, if you have other types like PNGs and WebPs and all those other types of files that you want, you can go ahead and add those in as needed. And of course, you could be having enums for all of these uh, files, but this is just for a demonstration here. So then we want to have the main functionality. That's the ability to save a file. And we sort of want this to work with both the images and the PDFs. <clears throat> and it turns out it doesn't really matter what file it is. We just, as long as it's allowed, we can save it in a similar way through the multi-part file. So we can go ahead and just get the extension by using that helper method here to get the file extension based on the file's original name. That's going to come through the form data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to generate a random UUID as the file name. <clears throat> you could have whatever you like here. You could have your own business logic, you have your own folders, anything you like. So basically I'm just going to have two helper, oh sorry, two error detections uh, methods here. So sorry, it will throw an error exception if the file format isn't valid. And that can be done easily enough. We just, in this method here, we pass the file type. Again, this could be an enum, but we want to say, well, if it's an image or if it's a PDF, we handle it in different ways. You could also have this in separate functions if you wish, but we sort of have the same sort of thing that we're doing here for this example. If we've got more sophisticated, you might break it down. And yeah, so if it's not a valid image file, we just throw an IO exception. Likewise with the PDF, if it's not a PDF file, we just throw an exception here. And if all is well and good, we just go ahead and we just take the file. We can get the input stream, which will be built into the multi-part file data type. And we have access to the root location, which we've set here. And we can go ahead and resolve that. So that will get that root location and then we'll append well, we'll add the new file that we generated from the UUID, the new file name. And we can go ahead and we can copy that. So that's 
will actually save the file to our system. And we want to just return the file name so then we have access to the UUID that we want to generate. Of course, if you want to have specific file names, and that will be part of your business logic. So we can go ahead and also we'll need to get the file. So we can do that in a similar way. We just take this root location, we resolve it based on the file name, and we're going to get the file name back from the when we save it. So we'll be able to access where it is. If you need a more uh, formalized way to get that, a more standardized approach, you just need to wire that up as you w wish. But all we do is we just take that location and we can just simply just read all the bytes from that location. And that's sort of a generic way we can get any file. So let's wire that up. Let's go to the file controller. Create a file controller firstly. Then we'll just get our imports that we need, which will get auto imported for you, hopefully, as you write the code. So we're going to have this endpoint slash files here. We're going to auto wire our file storage service that we just created. Then firstly, we're going to have a post request. So slash upload slash image. This is going to take a request param file, which is a multi-part file. So what we do is we just save the file and we have a try catch block wrapped around it. If it all's well and good, we return the file name. Now you could return JSON, but we just return this here like that in the string format. So we also handle the bad request and we'll see an example of that shortly. So we can create a similar thing for the uploading of the PDF. Once again, we have the request parameters, the multi-part file. We're returning the response entity string and we're just simply saving the file. And notice we're using the same method here. If you need more sophisticated logic, you could just expand upon that in the service. So we now need the ability to download the images or the PDFs. And I want to have a difference. You saw at the beginning of the video when you upload, when you download the image, you can get it in the browser. Whereas if you get the PDF, you will get the download link. Of course, you could alter that and change that. And we'll see how in just a moment. But what we want to do is in this path variable here for the file name, we need to put in the file name that got generated for us from the UUID in the posting of the file. And that's going to be our path variable. So we can just go ahead and get the file using our file storage service, which will be an array of bytes. And what we want to do here is we want to return that. So we want to return that in line. So this is the key line here. So we add the header, HTTP headers, the content disposition. And then we have this here. So we want to escape the backslashes here. So we go. We want it to be in line, and then we also want to reference the file name. So we just do it like that, and that's how we can get it in the browser. And we'll see that in juxtaposition to the downloading in just a moment. And then the content type here is just going to be JPEG. Of course, if you had other things like PNGs or any other things, you would have to check that probably based off the file name. So off the extension of the file name. So you would need to implement that logic. So you could probably have a helper utility method to do that. And, you know, obviously if it doesn't do that, it will get into the catch and we'll say not found. And then we'll just return a empty array bytes there. So finally here, we've got the download PDF. Once again, we have the file name as the path variable. We read the file. This time though, you can see in the header content disposition, rather than having it in line, we'll have it as an attachment here. And of course we have a different media type. We have the application PDF, and then we just attach the file data to the body. And if there's any issues, we just throw a IO exception well, we catch the I.O. exception and return the not found entity stream of stri uh, bytes of that image. So let's just take a little 
look at postman here. So firstly, what we could do is we could upload an image that isn't a JPEG. So I've got this test TXT part of the form data here. And you can see if I make this request, we'll see fail to upload image. So if we enter a valid type, we can see that I've got this JPEG logo here. If I go ahead and click save to, uh, sorry, send to send the request, we can see that we get this UUID back for our JPEG here. And that's uploaded to our uploads folder. So we can go ahead and we can either get it here in Postman like this, or we could get it in the browser here. So if I just change, this will be the same logo, but we'll have a different UI, uh, UUID for the image name. So we can see that we are able to retrieve that. And since we have, have our Docker container set up, so it will survive restarts, if you turn it off and turn it on again, you'll have that uh, volume there. So finally, let's look at the testing of the post. You can see I've added a PDF here. Go to the endpoint slash file slash upload slash PDF. I create this, generates this UUID to save the PDF to the folder. And you can actually get this in Postman here. So it will just render what it looks like. So I've just got this test PDF here. and also, you could use the URL as it's intended, and it actually downloads that PDF file to our file system. So that's what I wanted to cover in regards to file upload, both images and PDFs and the retrieval of those. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.